Hello, 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 and welcome to this final boss fight live stream. My name is John, and I am joined by such a long list this week. <laughs> Rogue is here. Hello, goodbye. We're we're not late. Hey, and uh, and, and Ben's here. Hello, it's good to see you. We do see you. Um, You're very I'll, nice. You're looking pretty tonight. Uh, uh, other than that, it's Christmas season and uh, convention <laughs> season and season, season, season. It is the season to be not here. Um, <laughs> Look, we're, we're okay. We would like you to be here. We also recommend make yourself some eggnog. Have a, have a little bit of fun. Be all nice and warm whilst you lis listen and watch wrap, our tomfoolery. Wrap up nice and warm because it is... I, I don't know if it is where you guys are, but out here it's rather cold. Um, My car is very covered in snow. That's how cold it is here. <laughs> I, I do have a nice ring to work on every day. This is a shame because I work in a, a big yard with fork trucks and other big things. Do the do the fork trucks do well at ice skating? I mean, the one which has really surprised me is when you start watching some of the lorries doing a Tokyo Drift. You slam the uh, <laughs> slam the fork of the forklift truck down fast enough and it becomes just skis. <laughs> well, that sounds like inspiration for a new <laughs> Grand Theft <laughs> Arcana. <laughs> We'll we'll get Richard on the phone. Uh, <laughs> I suppose at some point we should, you know, introduce the characters and what we're doing tonight. Because uh, I maybe I would. That is, is an idea. Intoxicated fish says eggnog isn't fit for human consumption. That's fine. You're a fish. Uh, mm. Right. Well, alternatively, you, you could go for rum. Or, or, or mold rum, or mold cider, or mold wine, or mold I, vinegar. I mean, I there's plenty of lovely options. Maybe not the mold vinegar. That does not sound pleasant. Right. Yeah, don't, tri don't uh, drink that one neat, maybe. Mold toilet water. Those last two are definitely bugbear specialties. We're mulling them over. It's, uh... <laughs> Well, that's what they're there for. You mull them. Because that's a nice phrase there, seven holes. The last Whatever couple do, of... No mulled absinthe. That one's bad. <laughs> <laughs> the last couple of Aww, sessions... That one's really good. <laughs> Fish is going to stick with their scotch. Well, which scotch might explain... Tape. No, no, you're going to get stuck with that. Might explain why they are intoxicated fish. Um... Ah. The last couple of sessions, Vason has been taking the rest of the group uh, on a little bit of a trip down memory lane. He's returned to the temple in which he was raised and has been uh, exploring a little bit of the past, uh, seeing a little bit the growth of, of uh, being out in the world and realizing that being polite to people is nice. Uh, he got in a little bit of a fight with um, an ex-rival at the school at the behest of the school, temple, whatever. <laughs> Place of education. Hey, little bit be. Yeah. Well, oh, you, you learn things at both of them, so I suppose that makes sense. Um, at the behest of the Grand Elders and uh, following the fight was accused of cheating. Um, falsely, I may add. Falsely, but still accused enough that they uh, inspected you and discovered your uh, recent dragon mark, at which point the three elders all got very uh, quiet and banished Vason from the temple 
On the way out, Vason and the group spotted one of the attendants who was trying very hard to not catch their eye, but also watching the group. And it was discovered that this was Vason's mum, who had... According to her and her very credible sources, entirely on her own, uh, snuck Vason's egg into the clutch of pure-blooded eggs. And thankfully, Vason turned out to be pure blood passing enough to stick with the pure blooded school's uh, pure, pure blooded training until uh, he came of age and the uh, gem dragon lineage that lay dormant within him revealed itself and he was initially soft banished and now upon this return and the the chromatic marking on his skin uh, has now been hard banished from the school temple. Damn it. Um, Someone's got monster <laughs> high on the mind. Apparently. <laughs> I don't know why this high school drama's all come from. <laughs> um, in the, like, in oh the my next God. one shot, <laughs> we're all going to high school. I dibs playing calculus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, dejected and slightly off put Vason went to sit outside the temple walls and waited for the group to mount up their carriage for the ride back to Waterdeep um, Vason's childhood friend attended the group bought the best armoring that could be um, put together in such a short time for the dragon scales that were bought by the group um, a set of braces of defense that Toya has claimed as their own um, and the group has mounted up its two to three day trip back to Waterdeep in the meantime Dark has been in Waterdeep unsupervised and on his own <laughs> so with, with mostly Rogue sitting on and watching we're now going to ask the very simple question of what the heck has Gark been up to? <clears throat> so we'll flash back uh, from, from time of the group leaving uh, the temple it will have been four days that Gark has been alone so let's flash back four days into the past and Gark you are <laughs> you are in Trollskull Manor as the loaded cart with your compatriots sets off what is it you are doing at this point well I wave them off and uh, think to myself, right, okay, it's time to take a look at that dragon book. They've got to have left it around here somewhere for me, and I'm going to translate it as much as I possibly can, and I start to look, and we'll dart after taking a quick gander around, I can't see anything. Um, I am going to roll at you. Would you like a perception or an investigation? To uh... I want to try and figure out what my what he's going to actually think depending roll on me, what he gets roll me an investigation check right you are uh, 
Okay, 15. Right. So, I start looking around and thinking, well, okay, maybe it's been left in a different place. And I, I start going through drawers and such for them. After a while, I come to a point of realizing, oh, they, they, they took it with them. They didn't... They... They probably didn't want me to, uh... To, to realizing in my own head what I, I have gone and sort of screwed things around. I will say that, that there is a small note, um, in that it's sort of like, I think it's fallen off the dresser or something like that in Basin's room, which will just be taken book to see elders. Have a nice break, Basin. <laughs> So yeah, about about half an hour, an hour of searching, you eventually find the note. Uh, right, okay. It's all frozen up for a bit, just to say, well, don't know what to do now. Um, so I said, probably go out and have a, a wonder, meander. Aiming to try and gain some inspiration of what he's supposed to do by going around a town and just want to see if there's any trouble which he maybe he can help out with. At least to start off with. Whereabouts in the town are we headed? Are you going towards uh, the marketplace? Like there is the the uh, sort of main street of shops and and market stall sellers or there is the city of the dead the the um i think what, they're probably you... more likely to go towards the marketplace as it's probably the more familiar sort of place where i would have gone before okay more of a sort of it's a meandering sort of look around for any troll just wanting to be helpful to do something because now it sort of feels a bit out of place. It doesn't know what to do. So just sort of meandering around, trying to have a, a rough sort of a laxadaisy or sort of look around. Um, how is everything looking? You head to the the main sort of market square, and you can see some of. The- some of the things that you you've come to know as pretty standard here you see the the two bards with their um loot and lyre in one one side of the square that you've interacted with previously um you can see the juggling fish seller uh Tossing fish back and forth, uh, making a uh, spectacle to try and draw in the crowd. Uh, you can see various other stands and stalls and, and food sellers set up. Um, one selling sort of fried dough and another selling the recent trend of the town of noodles. Well, I'll just start to wander around. Probably get myself some of that fried dough. Okay. Uh, I'll probably go over to my uh, my two bard friends. I know. Uh, hey, oh! How have you been keeping? Just trying to remember their names. <laughs> Bear with me while I remember the names of the people you're talking to. <laughs> Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Uh, oh, to be fair, it's been a while. I'm not even sure Gark remembers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's one of those things, right? Remember faces and all that sort of thing. And plus the other side of it, coming up with nicknames for everyone. So don't really get onto names straight away. <laughs> but I don't think there's anything wrong with that side of things. <laughs> as long as you're not mean. 
well, you can be mean sometimes. It, it depends on if you if they're good or bad, and you, you don't know that. So, be good, but look mean, and and that way it levels out. But um, also, don't make yourself sound like a villain, because if you sound like a villain, people aren't going to pick up on your energy correctly, unless you uh, want yeah. to be a villain. Don't be all like, yes, my big everything is going to plan. <laughs> but no, no, that is a, a very valid point. Yes, yes, uh, you want to present it as a, as a uh, formidable weakling. And that way you sort of cover all the bases and uh, you should be fine. I, it's a difficult look to pull off, it really is. I do like the idea that Gark is arguing with himself in his head. And for some reason, Vason's voice is the argument in his head. <laughs> well, it does make sense. You do pick on me a lot, you know. Just... <laughs> <laughs> we, they are different. They, they have very different motivations in life. That is very true. <laughs> they might be different motivations in life, but you know, sometimes it's a, it's, it's, it's a bit more of a struggle, and it's a more of a grey than a black and a white line. <laughs> And that's where I get confused, because I, I can't see Grey. Uh, he's just out there entirely. I do sort Unless of like it's idea. dark, in which case there are different shades of Grey. I do sort of like the like idea... Purple. You know, like, everyone assumes that, like, everyone sees everything the same way, like, my blue is the same as your blue, for example. Mm. I do sort of like the idea that um, a bugbear, rather than seeing things in grayscale, it's still called grayscale, but essentially it's actually like a purple scale. Well, it's shades of octarine, really, but, you know, we say purple ah. scale for the sake of ease. <laughs> oh. Octarine's a Discworld thing, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> God, uh, that, that was a stretch. <laughs> have you figured out, have you found their names, John? I, I, I can't find their names, so I'm going to make some new people up now. <laughs> okay. We're going to say that you've met these people in the downtime. Uh, I've packed away that set of cards, though. One second, I need name generator. <laughs> Tony and Bilbo, Shrew. Frodo, how are you doing? <laughs> Uh, how do you how oh I forget what her name is I forget how, I don't know how to say her first name but something like Charisse Ronan like that yeah that yeah, that sort of like not exactly up and coming anymore but like has recently made it big in the last few years Irish actress Ooh. oh oh Charisse something yeah like she's got like that is a fantastic first name. Mm. Uh, let us go with hey Jeff Thursday. hello Jeff yeah it's, hey, it's Jeff. a very select party this evening <laughs> we will say that this is a tiefling uh, bard on the loot by the name of Mastery and they have a uh it's a bold name. <laughs> they have a vir virtue name, so... Uh, and then I want a halfling name, please. <laughs> uh, and it is a halfling... Uh, Halfling bard on the loot by the name of Jalil Glosun. Right. So the master and Jalo. Got it. Yes. That's definitely what we said. <laughs> <laughs> so, how have you two been holding up? It's, uh,. Been a little tough the last few weeks. But, uh, can't really? complain. Well, it's good if you can't complain. That's a nice little thing. 
Bluetooth singing. Do you know of anybody who needs any help around here? I'm kind of looking for something to do. Thought it was going to be a bit more useful, I don't know. You still got those pipes? Yeah. You fancy joining us for some, uh, tunes? <laughs> Absolutely. I guess you like a nice performance check as I start pulling out the bagpipes. Yes, please. Start slowly inflating them, get them up into port, and... That's a 23. Nice. <laughs> you start squeezing the bagpipes and, and playing away and... Jaleel and uh, Mastery start playing along with whatever it is that you happen to play. Uh, you sort of let the frustration out of, of the last few weeks and yeah. the time in the dungeon. It's a cat out of hell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they sort of follow along, picking up what you're putting down and the, the three of you play consistently for a few hours and you manage to gain uh, let's roll those dice sure you get ten gold pieces collectively from uh, passers by who sort of throw in a few silver and a few copper over the course of the next few hours until it's sort of getting on into late afternoon, early evening on the first day. And you take your split of uh, four gold. Right, you. And yeah. they head off. Unless you wish to talk to them any further. In which case, I'll come up with other things that uh, they say. No, no, no. I'm quite happy for them to disappear off and... They disappear off them. and their names have now been noted down, so hopefully I'll remember that that's what they're called. A lot of sort of carrying on doing it. I'll just do a random walk around and all. It's just... But... As I keep going forth and all this sort of thing, I mean, I have no idea how long they do it. they have a lot of a way for. Or... I'm just sort of slowly, mean, almost boredly, start to make my way back to the troll skull, and probably at one point, uh, sort of pass by the window of Wall's shop, and uh, just look in through the window for the moment. You look in and you've sort of been walking along and the the sun is setting and the the shops and stalls are sort of slowly packing up. Though Those shops that are only open during the day are slowly packing up and those that deal more in things that go on into the evening and the night are starting to flare up and, and uh, lighting such as it is, torches and... and lanterns or magical lights in some places are starting to come to life as the sun goes down and you look into Wall's shop and there aren't any customers inside but as you look in Chekhov looks out and spots you and like as soon as he spots you he ducks under the counter and you see like the, the hat hangs in the air for a second and then drops down to the ground. Uh, I sort of reach out for the for the door and then uh, I, I second guess myself. I, mean, I, I sort of hold myself back. I, 
questioning and running free through my head as what earth am I thinking of doing? From this person who I was enemies with and quite verbally displayed that I was going to slaughter and sort of half turn away to try and think things over and turn back and I try the door. Is it open? The door opens and the little bell ding 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 ding. Um you You don't have to worry. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm gonna stay right over here, right by the door. Are you I, sure? I was uh Bonjour, I was told you would have a problem with me. I will be honest. I I still am working over problems and issues and such, trying to do better. There are many that but have uh, issues with my particular kind. There are many who have issues with mine as well. But it is no right to treat you in manners which I have, especially when you have shown yourself not to be a threat. And you are trying to uh, be a better person. Yes. Uh, it, it's, it's not easy, but many yes. I used to know who would uh, who could benefit from trying to do the same. There are certainly many out there who do need to. So, so I can stand uh, up I, from behind the counter now. Yes, yes, please, please do. Oh, good, my knees were hurting. Um, I would say I'll literally have my hands up to sort of show. There is nothing to to fear. I, was, I, I really wish. Might I be able to, to take you for a drink? We'll go to a, a public place so you don't have to worry about anything else. But... I just... I want, I want to talk and I want to learn more about you. Because I feel like I, I, I need to learn more about you. If, if, if you're willing, of course. I would I mean, like I'll to pay do for that. the drinks. You do not have to pay for all the drinks. I have uh, been earning a wage here for... I've been informed a wage is a thing that people earn on the surface. Yeah, it, it definitely is a thing they earn. Um, to a degree, there are two ways to do it. You know, you, you, you work for a boss to do what they want you to do, or you become your own boss, in which case you earn your own wage. I but, believe yeah, I... That's I, just be honest. Your purple friend is uh, my boss and I earn a wage and uh, his accent is terrible but it is going somewhere I suppose yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah. Okay. he, he well. is a good boss I do not see him often and he pays well sometimes they're the best ones I just have this very long to do list for when he gets back and uh, <laughs> Well, that's, that's work for you, no doubt. Yes. Well, I, I suppose I, I, I shouldn't hold you from what, what work you have left to do. Uh, well, uh, I think it is when, uh, It is nearly the end of the day, close enough. and. Uh, very well. well. Let's lock up the shop a little early tonight and uh, go for the drink. I'll, I'll help however I can. I don't know if it's dragging in signs or whatnot. But, uh, There's a, a li little A frame out the front. If you drag that in, I will sweep the floor a little and then we will go. It sounds good. So go out and have the sign and. Check off white uh, yeah. wipes up broom over the floor, sweeps a broom over the floor and uh, pushes the dust outside and 
leads you out the front door and closes and locks it and checks that the door's locked. So do you have a public place you wish to go to get the drink? Well, I only know a few. But, um, one is a, a howling portal, a yawning portal. And the other's Charles Skull. But I thought you might like to go to some other place other than our one, just so that you might be able to be a bit more relaxed and not have to worry so much. So, uh, would you like to go for the yawning? Or uh, we can find another one, if there's one nearby. Well, we could do the... Uh... We could do the yawning portal. All right. Uh, which is that's uh, I think that's over this way. That's that's a real one. <laughs> He's on the other side of the market. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, I believe so. To be fair, I just sort of randomly walk in a direction and hope for the best. <laughs> Usually in the right direction, pointing the right way. Oh, this is an awkward conversation. I'm... It's hard to think of what to say and how to say it. But maybe a few drinks might help that loosen out. Yes. So, come on then, and uh, the first round will be on me. You head down the high road and to the yawning portal in the uh, the dock ward of the city. And oh. Dernan brings a, a platter of ale over to you. Thank you. Well, uh, cheers. Uh, to potentially the betterment. The betterment. Uh, takes a drink. Right. God. By the gods, this is one of the hardest things I've had to do, but it needs to be done. I. I I don't know if you know much about me. I know that uh, there was a, a drow or drider who was down there who remembered me and claimed I was the reason why I got turned into a drider in the first place. I don't know if you know anything about me. I know of driders and I would not entirely agree with their viewpoint on the world. I uh, have not heard of you specifically. Right. Uh, your name, at least as far as I know, it is uh, well, it's just a great slur in my people's tongue. That was the only, the only name I knew for so long. It was only recently that I got reminded what my actual name is. And that's, that's the point. I, I should introduce myself properly. I am Gark. Ah. I, I think I had a surname at one point. Yes, I do. I am Chekhov Helvith. It is a great pleasure to meet you properly. And I hold out a hand. He looks at it and holds out his hand and... You can tell that he doesn't come from a society that shakes hands, but he's starting to accept. Like he, he has recently started to see this being a thing that people do, so he shakes your hand. It, it takes some adjusting to get used to those sort of things. I know what that was like. First part of my life, I was born in a cave. But um, I, I, I was, that's that's another point. I, I, I'll, I'll get straight to the point. The, the reason why I why I asked you to come by is to say I, I I need to know a few things. I 
been given great wisdom and uh, great visions by, uh, well, by many of the gods now. There seems to be a few. But Loaf, in particular, she was concerned. I would say disgusted, but I think concerned is probably better. Got away to the path which I got set down and she showed me the error of my thinking and the way that my mind worked. She showed me the many good, many, many good Rao out there. Just living everyday lives. Or trying desperately to make the world better and to improve everyone, not just Drow kind. And not to impress her, but for the sake of their own betterment. And is there aren't many who I can talk to straight away, and especially none who I have faced on a battlefield and lived long enough that we could actually have a conversation. It is I, an I, unusual thing. Yes. But when it comes down to it, understanding is important. It is highly important in this point. So I... I have to ask a question which might very well be personal and hopefully we can go on to better conversations afterwards. Uh, I need to know... Why... Why were you down there? Why, why were you our enemy to start? Why... What put you in that situation? It is uh, where I was born. I was born and raised in the Underdark, uh, a piece of the cog in the machine that is House Orfrinda. It is all I has ever known. I was a uh, male in a matriarchal war machine kept for my abilities with weapon or my looks and eventually it became a point that uh, I was bested in combat I could not go back to where I was even if you had let me go at that point I would have been They had a great torture room in House of Rinda. My screams would have echoed through it. I either disappeared in disgrace or... Well... Your compatriot, Wall, he offered me something better than destitution yeah I'm now glad that he did I admit that when he came for the first time I, I was curious I do I know what you mean of living a life where you knew no better but there was no other options no I too was born and raised in caves. I was effectively a monstrous pet of the drow that captured me. And it, it said in my mind that the drow were bad, were evil. It's shameful that it's taking this long to realize different. The drow that you experienced, if there was a portion of them that uh, belonged to House of Rinda or uh, one of the other houses that is in the Undermountain, uh, there are two that fight for control. Uh, I, there are portions of 
drow society that are uh, better left underground. I would be so bold as to say there are parts of every society which is usually best left forgotten this is or hidden away. This is something I am learning on the surfaces. Uh, I have not been experienced in a lot of other races. Customs. No. I, I am learning. I am as well. <laughs> Perhaps we can help each other learn to be better suited as things come by. I can help you learn to be a shopman at the uh, wall mm. shop, but I feel that you have uh, a better uses of your talents. Well, those who certainly believe in me must certainly seem to be let me just say okay. that no gods have shown up to show me visions of where I was wrong. What? Nor have they expected anything of me but to... Uh, uh, no divine beings are expecting me to work at the shop. No, 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 no. Mind you, from... Not that Vol is not a wonderful person. <laughs> when it comes out. From what I've seen and understood from Lolf, he is more proud of those who live their lives, not seemingly trying to impress her, but going out and achieving what is what they want, to live their lives. And I have seen some wonderful things which they have done. Amazing demonstrations and proof of pure goodwill. Some chaotic, but generally that the amazing things, and these are the ones which Lop has such pride in. And I reckon that Lop probably have a lot of pride in you too. Now you've gone down this route. I am just trying to it. live day by day. Oh, no, no. There's got to be more than that. What is it that you want? You've got I to have am... some kind of aspiration. I am pony. happy. <laughs> I want a pony. I... <laughs> I've heard of the pony, and I want a my little pony of my own. <laughs> I have... I suppose at some point in the future I may have aspirations to do more than I am at the moment, but as of this point in time, I am happy to live day by day, to have the work in the shop and to make an honest living for a change. I am not a man of war or a man of any great... All the people which yes, have met, I don't think. I think you would be amazed that you might have destiny already. And that there would be that looking over your shoulder as well. And then destiny because, shall come. Yeah. Destiny will come for you, my friend. I have it a It might not be the destiny of the adventurers, no. But even a destiny of a long life lived, of finding those who bring you joy, finding your true people, finding what makes you whole. That is the destiny of every person, whoever they have much chance to chase it. It's a different matter, but your law has come for you. So you have destiny. They will come for you as well. And 
and I Hello. shall welcome it when it does. Hmm. Hopefully when it comes down, you will gain grand inspiration from it. I... So I spent all that time down there. How are you finding it now you've come to the surface? It is hard. The sun, it stings my skin and eyes still. It's uh, a burden that will not go away, I fear. The hat and the, the high collar, it assists, but uh, I, I've, yeah. I've heard tell that others of my kind have left the city and gone to the north. Well, if the sun's a trouble, then certainly far north enough, you won't have to worry about it anymore. Beyond the spine of the world, there is a ten towns that I have heard are trapped in a perpetual winter state. The sun, it is weak. It is trapped behind clouds and snow. It is uh, not good for most, but for my particular kind, it is welcomed. I have no aspirations to go myself. I... <laughs> or at least not yet. It is too cold. Hmm. <laughs> That is certainly fair. And in the meantime, I've, I've heard of some lotions you can use. Try and ease the, the, uh, the sting of the sun. I think mm. some people call it a way to stop a, a sun burning. Sun screen, you may say. Well, I don't think it's a screen. I mean, you're walking around with a screen all day might get a bit of it. I mean, you might as well just use an umbrella. It might be easy. Hey, um, but, uh, is not a bad idea. Yes. Well, it's a way of taking the shade with you, I think, yeah. No. I am People also... Call it parasol. <laughs> I am also I... fine to stay in the shop. It is inside and I can control the light. Very true. But there is I... an element of being able to step outside and go on a grand adventure. Even if that is just down to the next shop. Or and... to the pub. <laughs> I have my hat and I have the evenings for this, yes. Yeah, that's true. No. I... I do have one more awkward question. Then I feel two, two tankards of ale in. We shall have the second awkward question of the evening. Okay. I think this has suddenly gone to the German side of things. It's, uh, yeah, just a little bit, yes. <laughs> I shall try to veer back towards the French accent any time now, but for now, vaguely European. <laughs> <laughs> so as we get two more steins <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Turns out wine makes the drow French Beer <laughs> makes them German <laughs> If it's really uh, good beer They get Czech <laughs> Just you wait till we get to the spirits Oh uh, when, <laughs> when it's their round They get the Czech <laughs> <laughs> So this is a tough one for me because it's a personal one but for the sake of you you have been down there you were brought up with it and this is made on on better terms but it is something which is close to my heart and I worry about for the sake of I've been through it that many have been through it why do you use our kind? Why did you use that? You don't know. Oh. I am. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, it's hard. 
It's hard to word things right sometimes. Right, there to are better. no good words for this. It is uh, an abominable act done by the darkest of my kind, and I apologize for it occurring, but I was unfortunately not involved, so I have no direct action on that part. I will say that there are those of my kind who are uh, physically weaker but strong mentally. And they think, well, if we are smarter than others who are stronger, they can they can do the strong and we can do the thinking and why would they need to do the thinking for themselves? Because the drow kind are clearly superior. Yes. I... It, it... It does not bode well for those of my kind who are not the ruling classes. I, I can speak only for those of us in House of Rinda, because that is where I am from, as this is what I know. But uh, if you are not important there, and I was not, then you had a very poor outlook on life. You were sent on the bad missions, or you were the cannon fodder. Do we have cannons? Yes, we have cannons. There is black powder in this world. Yes. You are the Frightened fodder stuff. for the uh, meat grinder. Mm. The scraps of which, thankfully, some bigger scraps than others sometimes make it to the surface and they live a better life as a apprentice shopkeeper with a vaguely European accent. Um, do you believe that? I have a vaguely European accent? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, it's getting uh, Swedish now. <laughs> but, uh... The, the, the ones of your kind that we have come across down below and other places. Do you believe that if, if, if we were to liberate them, as it were, to best them and give them other options, do you think that it is something which is common that you would willingly take? Or is this there are those or something are. of your own choice? There are those that are too far indoctrinated, and there are those that are the indoctrinators. That was a difficult word to say in the accent. <laughs> Most of these words are difficult to say in the accent. I do not have this accent. There are those of us who are too far gone to see the light. Uh, there are those of us who are the ones who are in power, who will do anything to retain what little grasp they have over people. No, no. There are more like me down there also, so offering the choice of freedom, you may find more such as myself, but do not do not think that all will be in the same boat as I. It's just the fear of going down and Effectively, as you've said, once you're defeated, you feel like you have no purpose. You cannot go back and, and that your life is worthless. But I, I've always believed that every species, every creature, regardless of what it is, so long as it has sentience and can understand, has a right to to live and to be the way that they want to be without judgment, without being held back, so long as they don't have a massive negative impact upon another. Is and I see the irony that I, I was very much... Sadly, mm -hmm. a great deal of those down there who will have 
wish to do what they do and that will be a massive negative impact on others mm. there is very little well, that you can do to stop those with a sense of power from letting if them all I can do it. is give them a chance and I will give them a chance do not also lose, lose sight of the fact that sometimes in the fights that you will be in, it is uh, kill or be killed. You can maybe pick apart the pieces later if the fight is uh, disabled, but uh, in the heat of the moment, it is sometimes your survival or the survival of your friends over the survival of your opponents. It is always a difficult measure. And I have always been willing to throw myself upon my sword to mean that my allies could survive for a few minutes earlier, a few minutes more. Zen ensures that you are throwing yourself on the swords of your enemies and that the enemies are dealt with. Because if they are sticking swords in you, they are not friends and they are not interested in changing. My friend, you are aiming your weapons at us as well, and you have changed. I was not successful in sticking the sword into you. That is very true. You offered me but the chance to... that wasn't the factor to... which made you change. You offered me the chance to throw down my sword to live a better life. Yeah. I did. If I had not, I had stuck the sword in you. You should have ensured I was not able to stick it in anyone else. Why should we do that? And it refuses you a chance to, to redeem yourself. You should at least be given that chance, shouldn't you? Know? You did? You once? Well, yes. I, I know we did. I know... What I mean is, even if you did stab me, but there was a chance that maybe you could turn out better, given the opportunity and that being your defeat. You saw no other way, and we showed you another door, as it were. I can't see a harm in getting stabbed every now and again, so that we can change people around. Make then a life you face better. death by a thousand cuts. If that's what it takes to get a better world, perhaps a thousand cuts is what I need. Do not throw away your piece of the world. For those who would uh, not seek redemption on their own. They still need to be given a chance. And once, I know they, this have, is something we do. once they have passed on that chance, if they say no to it. Then they have made their choice, I suppose, and what needs to be done needs to be done. And you should feel Not no guilt well. over those. But I do. I well, am aware. I just feel guilt for it. But I still remember each and every one of the faces way back to my first. I am haunted also. But by holding them in our memories, in some manner, they at least stay alive. It's the only thing, the decent thing to do. Keep this all is, their memory. Uh, indeed. Sorry. This is Just, uh, mm. veering too far to the maudlin for this fine establishment. Mm, mm. Yes, yes. Shall we uh, get a, another round? That sounds like a wonderful idea, yes. Uh. Oh, thank God, Boris. I thought those two were going to keep talking about death for all night. It's your stag do. We appear to be upsetting the stag do at the next table over. They're very, very much uh, listening in. 
Well then, if we're ruining their night, perhaps we should take an opportunity to fix it. Tell me, do you perform anything? Or do you have you done anything on that manner before? I'm song of any kind? I'm afraid I have very little experience with song and dance. It is not a part of House okay. of Rinda culture. In which I case... shall get the drinks. <laughs> Don't you run away too quick there. You he are tries to run away lesson. too quick there. <laughs> you are getting a lesson in the upper lanes and how we play. Oh no. It is time for you to relax as well as enjoy. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start pulling out my instruments and go, here's a horn. I've got the pipes. It's very simple. You just blow into this part. Out of curiosity, are these like pan pipes or bagpipes? It's a horn. <laughs> it's a minotaur horn, which uh. I've collected over my time. <laughs> So, yeah, it is very easy. You literally just blow into that part and make funny noises with your mouth. We you go... In different manners. It, you, you'll get it. You'll get it. You'll come along. So, all I want you to do is just to follow me and we're going to get a bit of rousing going. That's shall right, we, inspire him. And... Shall we ask what they uh, would like us to play? I mean, I... Do not know what I can play, but uh, apparently the horn is very easy. <laughs> right. We can take a suggestion if you've got one, you bachelor friend. No, I'm not going to ask for that one. That one's too rude. Mm. Ah, rude. Um, got got it. <laughs> and immediately pulling straight in. <laughs> And blowing the pipes up, getting ready to go in for a very rambunctious, rude, and particularly tasty little song. <laughs> uh, I've got to roll a performance. Are you happy with that? Uh, can we get another performance check? And I'm going to roll one for Chekhov, too. Right, you are. <laughs> That's a 21 here. Wow. <laughs> 20. Gosh. <laughs> well, apparently Chekhov takes quickly to the Minotaur horn. <laughs> I am just imagining, uh, you know, Ang with the Suzu horn. <laughs> In the lot of, just literally just going wild with it. <laughs> Uh, you, you launch into a very rowdy rendition of... Uh, a wizard staff has a knob at the end and all of the classic <laughs> uh, rude drinking songs. You know, the dwarven classics yeah. of gold, 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 gold. <laughs> um, Making sure to pull the bachelor up and get him dancing on the tables and all that lot as well. Bright pink. Absolutely bright pink. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make this a... A night to remember and to forget as you drink. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to roll a, I'm going to roll a d20 for the bachelor because I can see that uh, Rogue hasn't logged in. <laughs> oh wow! I mean, he's he's rolled an 18, so he does a pretty good job of uh, keeping up with the the music and the dance, despite being <laughs> embarrassed by it. See, that's the secret. After you let your inhibitions go a little bit, you can relax and enjoy yourself. This is a spice of life, Jekyll. This is what living is, rather than just surviving. Are you two free in like a month? Because that's when me and my fiance are getting married. He'd love your music. <laughs> So long as I haven't been killed down below, I'll be there. Wait, what? <laughs> and I'm sure Jacob will agree as well. <laughs> he stops playing. For... 
I would love to. I have not been to a wedding ceremony in the surface yet. I will have to <laughs> get the time off of work. Aye. I'm sure we can um, convince an old wall for that side of things. I am unsure on the holiday policy with, uh... I don't even know the name of the shop. <laughs> uh, that's the drink talking. It's, a, it's okay. We'll talk it's things over. It's in there somewhere. It's in, it's in there I'll, somewhere. I'll, we'll, we'll make a deal or something. I'm sure we can figure something out with Bob. It, it was a good one when it goes down. It's a very good one. Oh. Just, you just got to look out for the chair and, you know, make sure you might, oh, that might just be me. I mean, I might be a bit heavy handed around it, but all the same. Anyway, party on. <laughs> you party into the wee hours of the morning and wake up sometime as the sun rises. You and and Chekhov and the bachelor <laughs> awaken inebriated slightly hung over very much in wall shop you question where the traffic cone came from <laughs> I've never seen one of those in my life did we make that <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're being too loud. Wait. Ah. Wait. 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 wait I don't know. Where are Where your am trousers? I? Where are my trousers? Oh God. Right. Right. We're just hands in front of him, just covering. So um and um, um it just grabs one of Walt's aprons. Did you turn around? Where's? Oh. Someone's Where's written my... a number onto your backside. <laughs> what? I don't know what it's for, but, you know. Oh, it might be an address. All right. It says, if lost, please return to the yawning portal. This uh... side up. <laughs> well, that's definitely one of the signs of a good night. <laughs> Where's, where's my best man? Boris, That's where are you? That's a good question. That is a very good question. Which, oh, which, which one was Boris? Uh, Boris was the... was. <sighs> Boris was the Aracocra. The Aracocra. Right. Maybe he's on the roof. Oh, maybe. I think we need to... Um, I'll tell you what. Let's all get a quick cup of coffee and we'll, we will go out together. Chekhov, you're coming. I know you want to look after the shop. We can give you a hand with that afterwards. We need to go and find the best man. Hey. We will go out and find the best man. Okay, Inside we might voice. need a bit. I mean, to be fair. Too loud. My head. You're right, you're right. We need a hair of the dog. We need a hair of the dog. Uh, hold on, hold on. I will go Pull find the, the hairy dog. I have one of the bottles of whiskey I still have on me. <laughs> Here, drink up, this will help. And then we're gonna go out and we'll find your best man. Oh no, oh, oh okay. Oh, do you have another one of those hats? Oh, I will go and find the other hat, it is in the back. Yeah. It's too bright. Oh god, if this is how we ended up, I'm scared about what happened with my fiancé. <laughs> he was well, at the yawning portal. Oh. I hope he's not go down the yawning portal. Oh, he's he's the the bright red minotaur. Slightly taller than you. With a broken horn. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful man. Magnificent singing voice. That's why we met. We're in choir. We met uh, in a choir. Fair enough. I mean, it's you... a good way to go about things to inquire about each other. Uh, uh... Right. Anyway, drink up, hat on, and let us go out. 
think I'll agree with you. A nice hat to keep a bit of shade would be good. <laughs> oh god, no, no, I can't drink that. Oh no. It was, oh, it's good, it's good, but it's, it's, I need no, a bucket, no, need no, a bucket. It's, it's, it's uh, okay, it's okay. Uh, Chekhov, oh. Chekhov returns very rapidly on hearing that with a bucket <laughs> and three large uh, tankards of coffee. Right. There we go. We're going to bugbear this coffee. Or at least I am, because it'll help take the edge off. So there we go. <laughs> How do you bugbear a coffee? Well, like I've... this, and I take the bottle of whiskey and just pour it into his coffee. There you go. <laughs> I was going to say I have learned it is better not to ask these questions, but you have uh, <laughs> discovered that for yourself. Check off your that? Can we swap? That's too much whiskey. In that it's any whiskey. Yes, I, I was believe. going to say, too much whiskey, right? All right, I'll put a dribble in the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and just takes the, the the one from Chekhov with a tiny bit of whiskey in it. He just he just downs it. <laughs> okay. To your big day, now let's go find your best man. And your trousers. Aracos. And the trousers. That's a good point. They they could be important. So, uh... Is that them on the? How, why is it on a rifle? And how is it up there? Why is it right? Wait, is this a gun shop? There are. Uh, we sell various arms and uh, some firearms, some, some, some legs, and some arms. Yes. Can you? Hold on, uh, Mister Bugbear. Can you? Can you get the? Hold on, just a second. I'll just get it. I'll grab you around the waist and heave ah! you up. Ah! There you go. Right. Get hold. Quickly now, you forgot okay. to put your underwear on last night, didn't you? <laughs> wait, but oh wait, no, there it's in the. Why is it in the pocket? I don't and know. It... Maybe we should ask the person who wrote on your ass. Anyway, in the meantime, we why is... need. Why is there a g-string in my other pocket? I find it best uh... not to ask these questions. You do not <laughs> want to know the answers. Right now. We just need to retrace our steps, okay, just... and we should find <laughs> everything. Okay. Maybe. You turn around. So. I don't want you looking at me whilst I get dressed. Right. Well, I, I'm gonna go out the front end. Can I see any signs of which way we might have come from? Roll me a survival or a perception check. Uh, we'll go with perception check. <laughs> uh, 16. You can see a stall that has been knocked over. You can see that there is normally a table of items in front of Wall's shop. That is, that the table has been left out overnight and has collapsed over from the weight of something heavy coming into contact with it. Uh, <laughs> you can see sort of a trail of destruction along the street of, of where you have presumably stumbled back in. You can see one of the market stand uh, people has... has uh, is setting up their stall a little bit down the street and is, like, writing the stand that they have you you can work out where you came from right I have a clue we came from this way slightly further down the street in the direction you just hear my cabbages <laughs> uh, I think I think the engaged man is finally dressed and Thoughtlessly and mostly to entertain me, the me Rob, leaves the g-string on Wall's pillow. <laughs> <laughs> ah yes, I am Chekhov, and this is uh, Gark. Oh, um, you are. Oh yeah. 
And we're um, going to be your wedding singers. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Look, wait, I thought you were in. I thought you played instruments. You know, a bit of singing, a bit of. I mean, it's kind of hard to hear over the plague pipes anyway, I'll grant you. But you know, all the same, we get everyone in a nice royal rabble. Mm. My name and is. We can do classical too. My, my name is Francis, and can you still keep it down? I've had coffee, I've not gotten over a hangover. He is, uh, no. <laughs> this is down. Uh, oh no. I have an idea. I go and I grab some cotton and some lint and fluff and make some earplugs and go to put them in your ear. There we go. This'll help. Isn't gun cotton expensive? You know what, it's not my sh it's not my shop. Why do I care? It, it, it's cotton. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure I'll probably get a bill later. But I can always return it. It just has a little bit of wax on it. It'll be fine. Anyway. What right. did you say? I said... Well, I could I, I just pull out the plugs. I said if I return ah! it right... <laughs> just put the plugs back in, tap on the head. Go on. Let's go find your best man. Alright, Boris the Aracocco, where are you? You dumb bird. Boris, Boris! 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 I think I see him. Chekhov pulls the hat down low as he comes out of the shop following you, and you follow the trail of destruction back a few blocks. Uh, I will you say as well. Just yes. one quick. Along the way, if we do come across any store which actually sells a nice large parasol, <laughs> <laughs> I am going to immediately buy it for Chekhov. We'll say that occurs, because right. it seems reasonable that there might be someone yeah. selling that sort of thing. Every time I let it go back to you and what you were saying before, John. <laughs> you you continue another couple of uh, streets down the road from from where you've purchased this large parasol, and you find uh, which is that? One second. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me remember what the name of the. Uh, Thing is that you find first. <laughs> uh, you see the oh, aptly named just past the marketplace. Uh, you see the great drunkard statue, one of the one of the many walking statues of Waterdeep. Um, Sorry, did you say walking statues? Yes. Oh, cool. I did not know that. <laughs> um, the statue is... Uh, resembles a human, a man tumbled backwards onto a building. His arms limp at his side, his head tilted onto his chest, and a large stone battle axe. Uh, has just sort of been cobbled around near his feet. Mm. And you see that your path from the yawning portal back to Wall's shop led past this statue, and as you start to approach it, you can see that... Uh, Boris the Aracocra is sort of curled up on top of the head of the great drunkard. He does this every time. How does he always find the statue? <laughs> it is a very tall statue and he is a bird. Hey, that's rude. He's an Aracocra, not a bird. Is there are some well, things that instinct is uh, instinct is the same? I mean, he has a bird brain, though. 
Indeed. Good, good heart, bird brain. Uh, how, how do we get him down from there? I um, normally throw rocks. Well, uh, how high is it? Uh, the statue itself is probably four or five stories tall. I never said that I didn't hit him. I just said I threw rocks. <laughs> well, just thinking, well, if I make a bifrost, could I make a, a like, a ramp bridge up there? <laughs> yeah, probably. You you can go. Case, yeah. You you head down the street enough to uh, to the point where you can. Oh, hang on a second, man. Can I? Uh, shall I roll a uh, a check to see whether I figure out the right place? I mean, that seems a reasonable idea. Okay. Would you like wisdom or intelligence on that one? Uh, let's go with intelligence for that one. Okay, so. You sort of eye things up and work out the angles. And... <laughs> yeah. Okay, sixteen. <laughs> you uh, you pick a point somewhere in the marketplace. You hit the staff into the ground, and <laughs> this rainbow bridge <laughs> apparates in front of you, up towards the head of the drunkard. It's I maybe a little contest. sleep steep. Right. I still okay, I'm still drunk. I've got to be still Why is there a rainbow? <laughs> Why is oh, the no, statue it's... vomiting a rainbow? It's pretty cool, isn't it? Come on, let's go and get your mate down. Best man, let's go get the best man. Best <sighs> man. That's the best man. The best man asleep on the head. <laughs> so, yep, make it a way up to the best man. Pretty much. Bar Boris, you... Twit, get down, wake up. Good morning. Time to get you a nice spring cup of coffee. Or Boris a full is... cup of coffee. Boris's eyes flicker open with a Why is it so bright? Because you're asleep on the drunkard again, you twit. Oh, five if you're going minutes. to keep doing this, then you should at least wear your hoodie. Five more minutes. No, <laughs> ten seconds before I push you off the statue. Oh. Okay. Why do you smell like lemons? Dragon paint? <laughs> That's a terrifying thought. <laughs> I... Oh, sorry, no, it's a character called Dragon Bait, which used to <laughs> smell different. <laughs> that was a way of communication. Sorry, callback. <laughs> a very big callback. I think that was a. <laughs> <laughs> lemon <laughs> uh, lemon stall oh did you hit on that illusionist again oh. she always says no but maybe you need, you need to take a hint is the hint lemon like, scented the hint is right. being bopped on the head by a by a a wizard rat. Oh, it, it might be lemon scent. Were they throwing the lemons at you? In which case, it could very well be lemon scented hints. No, did... <sighs> he has this thing for this admittedly quite attractive um, rat illusionist. Um, some, so something pretty. Carter, I remember. Really silky. I, will, I'll, I'll, I won't deny. Very pretty. But, um, how do I put this? This is the seventh time. Aww. Last uh, last time, she turned you into 
a brick. Just a brick for a week. I was nearly a wall. You were. <laughs> No, that would be it's a very very awkward thing to be when we're both const when we both work at a construction company. But you still went to work when you were a brick. Well, I brought him with me. I didn't really have much say in the matter. Well. I mean, it's true, he was a brick. Nobody listens to the bricks. I know. Nobody can hear talk. the bricks. No, they, well, his brick didn't. Only reason I knew it was him was that it had feather patterns in the in the clay. Why did you try to put me in a wall then? I didn't. That was Jeffrey. Oh yeah. He just thought that it, that you were in his pile. What's that? Because you put him in that pile? No, I put him down next to my pile, which was next to Jeffrey's pile. So you both have piles? Well, yes. Right. Can we go get coffee? Yes. No. Is no. This... We should uh, go what? get bugbear coffee. Yes, that's a much better idea. Well done, my friend. How long no, is the statue safe. I want... Rainbow? <laughs> that's that's I'm glad I'm not the only one who sees that I so thought I was still drunk oh, oh come good. on everybody can see that oh yeah he's, he's definitely there I brought him there I made it good for can you, you. Make it, can you make it a slide I mean it, it it's deep and smooth so hmm Maybe if I do it, do it, do it. Maybe if Whee! I do it. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, that was a bad idea. That was a bad idea. Ow. Okay. I need my, I need my fiance. Let's, let, <laughs> let's go find him. Oh, my cock sucks. And that's, that's one way down, I suppose. Right, as I just have the best man onto my shoulder. Right, go on right. then. Okay. And my way back down. Who <laughs> he <laughs> drools when he sleeps. Anyway, right. So... Yes, your your fiance was at at the yawning portal, wasn't it? Uh, yep. Let's keep heading in that way, and we'll see if well, if they're still there. They I mean, they might be there. They might be somewhere. We'll keep an eye out. But what do they look like? Um, slightly taller than you, broken horn, red fur, and just honeyer or honey. And but no, made honey, of honey. honey. No, no, he's my honey. He's your honey. Yes, he's... not your honey, my honey. It's my honey. Gotcha. Okay. Wait, just who's on first? Francis just ple looks at Chekhov pleadingly. Is he always like this? This is really the first time I have been out with him. <laughs> So I am going to say yes. Hmm. We're up to find the minotaur, the wonderful minotaur of honey. Da, 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 da. I'm going so to I'll say maybe. Right, to be fair, I'm getting better. <laughs> he, uh, he He's apparently trying to better himself. That's lovely. Uh, Boris is going to puke. Like, obviously going to puke if he keeps bouncing him like that. It's okay. I know. Press the digitation. 
I mean, it's not that much of a problem. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Very weird when you see an Arakuk puke, because it's all dry. It's just pellets. <laughs> Blows, it's weird. Blows away in the wind. Easy to sweep up. One of the best people to get drunk with. It's how we came, it was how we became friends. Everyone else was too messy. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. We need to carry on looking for clues. I just sort of start screaming out, We're looking for a big horny person! Big red horny person! You're just describing half the tieflings in the red light district. Just look down the red light district. See lots of people waving back. Hello! No! Bigger! Have you seen anyone bigger than you? Hello? Do you mean me? <laughs> yeah. Oh God, that looks I mean, amazing. I mean, just see if I know it is. Um, hello, Goliath. Um, <laughs> my name's Gar. Uh, mind you, actually, while you're up there, can you see a red monitor? I don't think it's a mini mini monitor, it's a regular monitor, which is red, and is has a broken horn, but it's still got one horny, and uh, is out there somewhere, maybe drunk, or doing other things, I don't know. You mean honey, yeah? Oh, you got mm. honey? Yes! He's over there. Ah, oh, honey! And Francis just runs over to what he can see. <laughs> it's very much the I'm drunk slash hungover sort of run walk. <laughs> Hello, honey. It's a pleasure to meet you. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, don't 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 mind him. He's is he the what? band? Yep. Yeah. Um, like our our stag do ended up getting a little lost with them. You know where did you? You know where did you go? Party. Yeah, I. I mean, based on the coffee that he made this morning, clearly he. He, clearly, he has a problem. Uh, a bottle of whiskey, entire bottle of whiskey and a coffee. It was an entire bottle of whiskey and a coffee. An entire bottle of whiskey and three coffees. Three steins of coffees. Gotta get the details right, otherwise it's not really fair. Are you okay? What did you end up doing? We, uh... I ended up following you back because it seems to be a good party I followed. You and I got lost here and I sat down and had a sleep. Oh, sweetie. You were meant to... You weren't meant to follow me tonight. You were meant to go off and be wild with your friends. My friends didn't really do the being wild, and it seemed like that this guy was doing so good being wild, so I wanted to be wild with this guy, and he keeps pointing at, uh, Gark. <laughs> I just couldn't keep up, and then I got tired. Oh, sweetie. Let's get you home. Home oh, sounds good. Can you make sure Boris gets home? Absolutely. Okay. Come on, honey. And, like, we haven't actually described what Francis looks like. Francis is a relatively short human, and this is a very tall red minotaur. So it's just this very cute image of, like, the, the small person leading the giant hungover person. Both, <laughs> both sort of, like, leaning into each other, trying to walk down the street. <laughs> Uh, 
They make a wonderful couple, don't you think, Jekov? Yes, they are uh, very much clearly in love. Also, you didn't ask where Boris lives. Oh, bugger. Uh, and he is right, uh, unconscious and very shaken up and possibly still hung over. Maybe we should put him back on the statue. <laughs> Well, that's an idea. <laughs> I just made a promise that we'd send him, we'd get him home. So, we are home now. Well, it's your There's home a chair. Or my There's home. a chair. <laughs> no, 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 no. Boris will have a home as well. We're just gonna. Okay. Boris. 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 Oh, five Come minutes. on, Boris. And just a, a little tap to the side of the, ch the beak. Come on, wake up. Oh, not you again. I'm going to take you home now. Now, where is home? Waterdeep. Where in Waterdeep? It's on Copper Street. Copper Street. Right. Okay. So you live on Copper Street? Yeah. On the corner of Copper Street and Thunderstaff Way. Corner of Copper Street and Thunderstaff Way. Right. Okay. In which case, I sort of hike him back onto my shoulder and immediately go over to the closest merchant and go, Where is Copper Street and Thunder Street Way? <laughs> You would know that uh, Thunderstaff Way heads north from uh, Trollskull Manor. And uh, that yes. just after crossing the high road, it does cross with a street called Copper Street. Okay. Right, you are, in which case, I start to take him up there quite happily and along with Frozen. Um, there we are. A nice little adventure for you as well. So we take our friend back. Do you have fun with that? Or did you enjoy yourself? I would say that uh, this is something of interest to do, but uh, not something to do all the time. No, oh, no, 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 no. On special occasions. Like the weekend. But yes... I feel that done. maybe, you know, maybe once a month, at <laughs> most. Very well. This is, to uh, be fair. this is a lot. Well, that's very true. But there are other things you can do. I mean, you can't work your life away after all. There's a whole world of fun things. No, this is fair, this is fair. I am Maybe you can read a book. I don't well, like Jimmy books. always used to like read books. That was his favorite pastime. Where you could collect things. I should know. There's all manner of different bits and pieces you could do. I just, I know that you you like your new life. I just want to. I kind of want to see if I can make it better for you. And this is the least I could do. Say thank you. But I'll let you think of that. And if there is something that you want to do at one point, something which takes your... I will be sure me know, to you know. inform you and also Wall. Yeah. Well, we've got the wedding to look forward to. Yes. As long as we make sure that this is a well-rested best man. <laughs> <laughs> you guide uh, Boris back to his homestead right now do you need us to get you any water or anything like that or are you quite happy to just sort of I go in deal. and I will deal with it alright 
You just take it very slow and... <laughs> can imagine him just falling over the moment he gets in the door. And... Yeah. Sort of opens the door. <laughs> closes the door behind him with his feet. <laughs> yeah, I reckon he's going to be all right. Right. Well, I suppose we should probably make our way back to the shop. And I'll help you tidy up a little bit from what was done. No sense leaving you all a mess. Yeah. This is a good idea. <laughs> we should be, you know, ready for a few days' time when I am sure they will return from their little adventure. Well, yes. And maybe you have... <sighs> You have shown me a little slice of the life that you lead. I show you now a little slice of the life I lead and show you how to work in the shop. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Let's do it. And so you head back to Wall's shop and spend a hour or so tidying it up before... Uh, Chekhov deems that it is tidy enough to open for business and then continues to tidy the shop up the rest of the way until it's fully repaired and and, uh, back in fully shop shape and then shows you over the course of the next day and a bit how to take orders and to uh, sell the items that are available on the shelves Uh, He takes bookings for people to come in for uh, fitting sessions and uh, measures people for prosthesis parts. Um, And you learn a little of the basics of of the role that he he has been doing for uh, Wole while Wole has been away and you see the sort of build-up of the tickets and... Is there anything else you wish to do in the downtime, Ben? I literally can't think of anything else to shy of, obviously potentially doing a little shopping to try and get bits and pieces back in, but I can imagine that's something which we can handle outside of this you do a than... you do a small amount of shopping and purchase some much needed supplies to head down into the dungeon again and after the better part of uh, oh sorry one last thing which I would be doing as well yep is I would be using the how to write book and the sea grog run book <laughs> and taking some time to learn to write and to read a little bit quicker. Okay. Roll me an intelligence check. I love the image of Chekhov occasionally just like poking his nose, seeing during like the quiet hours of the shop, seeing and seeing. Um, uh, Gark trying to read receipts, comparing it to his, <laughs> his, his, his C, C, C Grog run book. <laughs> you spend the That's better it. part of one of the days uh, practicing with the reading writing book and uh, reading C Grog run, and it's it's not entirely sinking in yet, but you do feel that you're making improvements. Um, this is good. Dawning on me that it would have taken me forever to write down the notes for Vason. <laughs> <laughs> I might have got the first word done. <laughs> Eventually, after the better part of six days, the rest of your group returns from the excursion. Uh, six or seven days away, they, they return... Uh, a little worse for wear, a little bit road weary, but uh, you spend another day or so 
gearing back up again, collecting any equipment and items and potions and supplies before heading back down into the dungeon. You trek through the first two levels and find your way back to a uh, gateway portal where you place a coin into the slot in the headstone and the portal <laughs> shimmers and shakes and suddenly activates and you can see through it to the other side and you will boldly step back down into the twisted caverns where you are met by the surviving drow of the dragon attack who offer to invite you down a further level within the dungeon. And they show you the route through the twisted caverns and down deeper into the dungeon. And you find yourself starting to explore the fifth level of the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. And hopefully any minute now my notes on that will open. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, there, there was one thing which I did need to check on. I don't know whether you have the notes on it or not. On, obviously the last time I went down I made a bet on myself. Ah yes, I do <laughs> have the notes on that. Uh, one second. I was going to say, I imagine there's going to be more bets on the way down this time. <laughs> I imagine there will be, and we will cover that. Next time. Next time, or between sessions. Next time on Final Boss Fight. <laughs> uh, you need to add 300 gold pieces to your character sheet for betting on your survival. Right, you are. Says a note from Sunday the 22nd of October that I've made. Right, 300 added. Uh, you head down a river um, that connects level 4 and level 5, a long, dark, sluggish river with large, blind fish meandering down until eventually the um, the boat drifts up the the raft that you have uh, been been traveling down on drifts up to a large forest uh, a narrow pebbled beach uh, separates the river from, from the forest and a sign crudely carved at various intervals down the beach one you see in draconic another in elvish another in common all of them read the same words and I'm going to share it first in draconic Ah, uh, except, uh, I don't think... I should open Pat Andre. <laughs> <laughs> it's only now I, was real I actually realised it was going to be useful for me to actually open it. And uh, no, I don't know if either of you speak Elvish. Nope, so I won't share it in Elvish, but I'm going to wait for <laughs> Vason to read this. Jason is trying. <laughs> huh. You see various trees, both deciduous and coniferous, as well as berry bushes and other shrubs. You see all kinds of flowers growing here. Uh, 
most of the trees are between 30 and 50 feet high, and you can see foot trails that lead between them. Running through the forest at various intervals, you can see 20 foot high walkways atop ivy covered white marble archways supported by thick white marble columns. Some sections of the walkways have collapsed, whether due to age or seismic activities. And now, if Vason has loaded up the game, I'll let him read the sign mm -hmm. that's on the beach. Behold Below's Wood, harm not, lest ye be harmed. <clears throat> this same that's... message carved in common and elvish at various intervals along the beach. The same carved handwriting in the three different languages. Oh, no. That smells like hard. druid... That smells like druid stuff. So we're not allowed to harm anything. Are they allowed to harm us? Or are we safe so long as we don't do anything? Razor just shrugs. Like, right. he's not been very talkative since he's got back. Like, in fact, reading that sign is probably the first words you've heard him say that were followed by a grunt. Right. I... Are you okay? I know I, I don't. I probably shouldn't ask and all that sort of thing. I, I don't. It's not. But I'm um, a bit. Well, well, you're usually quite. You're usually quite talkative, and I'm. You look a bit. A bit gravel, and the others are shaking their heads at me as I'm asking this, so I don't know. I should probably stop talking now, shouldn't I? Yeah, there's just like a dark look and a very quiet nod as he comes to that realisation. And I think Basin is just going to turn and stand ready on the beach. Have we, have we beached our little raft? You will have beached your little raft at this point and be gathering upon the pebble beach. I think Vason will just quietly take the lead and just start walking in. Scale ledge sort of slung over his shoulder. At this point, as you start to make your way into Willow's Wood, the fifth level of the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, we're going to stop for this year. Uh, that's that's a cliffhanger as Vason heads deep into the wood, or starts to head into the woods. Uh, that you will be resolving in January times because uh, well cr Christmas is going to occur what? uh, Chris what's this uh, pagan it's... holiday it doesn't exist in favour <laughs> uh, <No. laughs> mid midwinter uh, winterinmus winterinmus so that's going back a bit <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't done so already please do hit that follow button it's a great way for you guys to know we go live in a completely free way that you can support us on the channel it really does mean a lot to us uh, thank you for joining in on what turns out to be roughly the same length of stream as normal even if I've only got these two with me <laughs> to be fair, we did kind of stretch that out a little bit, didn't we? It worked quite well. We had fun. We had fun. It was good. We had a good time. Honestly, I think... What did you think about the whole random, we need to find the best man? Because <laughs> 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 I know you weren't expecting that at all. No, that, at was, all, you know? that, that was not prepped. That was not <laughs> thought out. That was definitely... I didn't definitely Google, like, <laughs> try and find out anything that happens in the hangover movies 
<laughs> there, there was the temptation at one point to just have uh, uh, Chekhov come back from the kitchen and be like, there's a tiger in the kitchen. <laughs> um... God, that would be such a depressing end, though, if um, somehow either Chekhov or Gark died to a tiger <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> like, Walt just comes home and there's a bloodied, sta bloodied tiger and just two corpses, in three corpses probably, in the middle of his house. Yeah, that's a way to traumatize Walt. Um... <laughs> Well, if anyone oh, don't worry, we're going to be traumatised anyway with a moment in front of the G-string. Yeah, well. I am I am looking forward to the long version of the, of that part of this episode. I, as Wall just goes, what? I, <laughs> I would also be very impressed at the tiger that can manage to do 68 hit points of damage to Gark before Gark deals with the tiger. Um, <laughs> I don't anyway. actually know the stat book of a tiger. <laughs> What's the R as a tiger? I don't think it's very high. Uh, <laughs> let me look it up real quick. <laughs> uh, tiger CR is uh, one. <laughs> it's, a, it's a magic, it's an ascended dire tiger. Okay. It's the one that ends up playing the the song in um, from the Hangover movie <laughs> on the piano. Um, <laughs> How thank we got you guys. piano in Walsh shop? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Where did that traffic cone come from? Uh -huh.